Over the last couple of days, I've been reviewing a brand new filter from Optolon, but before I tell you about the filter, here are a couple of images I took with this filter. First up is this image of the Horsehead Nebula that I took from my Bortle 7 backyard, and this was taken with only about two and a half hours of exposures using a small 85 millimeter refractor and this particular filter. And this other image of the Monkey Head Nebula was taken with my larger C11 Edge HD using a Hyperstar. So the focal length on that picture was 560 millimeters and the focal ratio of f2. And then this last image was of the Rosette Nebula also taken from my Bortle 7 backyard using this filter and my C11 Hyperstar. Although these images look very clean and very low noise, each of them is composed of only a couple of hours of data. Today I am reviewing Optolong's brand new El Para filter. Now this is a dual band filter, meaning that it lets through hydrogen alpha and oxygen, which allows you to get excellent images of nebulae from light polluted locations. Now this filter is in the same class as filters such as Optolong's L Extreme and L Enhance. However, unlike the standard L Enhance and L Extreme, this filter can actually be used on fast systems such as RASAs and Hyperstars, as well as slower systems such as any long focal length refractor or schmidt cassegrain telescope. So if you can only get one filter for nebulae or for fighting light pollution from the city, this might be it. And today I'm going to run it through its bases on a regular f4.8 refractor, as well as a fast hyperstar system, which is my C11 Edge HD hyperstar. And we'll see how it performs on both of those systems. And I'll also be on the lookout for any issues such as halos on bright stars. The two inch version of this filter has a regular price of 259 US dollars. So if it performs as advertised for the $259 regular price, this is excellent value. So I went outside and got some data for the Optolong El Para filter. Now I imaged a couple of bright stars to see if they would show any halos. But first of all, I had to make sure that the telescope I was using did not have any issues with halos. So I used a very high quality quintuplet apochromatic refractor. And on the top left, is a shot of the very bright star Aldebaran and uh, this is a magnitude 0.85 star and this is a single 30 second exposure and I did not use any filter for this first shot so that it can act as a control and as we can see the telescope itself has absolutely no halos. Now underneath we can see the same star Aldebaran magnitude 0.85 but this time I was using the Optolong El Para filter. And in a 30 second exposure, we can confirm that it has absolutely no halos here. And then on the right down here, we can see the very bright star Capella magnitude 0.05. And again, in a single 30 second exposure, absolutely no halos visible. And then I tried a fainter star, Menkelenen, at magnitude 1.9. And again, of course, no halos on that at all. And I can zoom in two times and again as you can see no evidence of any halos which is absolutely excellent performance and this was one of my main complaints previously about the Optlong L Enhance and the L Extreme they definitely displayed halos on all of these stars but the L Para does not show any halos. Now these are stacked images and uh, generally I stack between 8 and 15 images for each of these stars uh, so we can get a better view. At the top left again is the very bright star Aldebaran and as you can see without any filters the telescope does not show any halos at all. Underneath here with the Alpara filter no halos at all on Aldebaran. On the right the brightest star that was uh, above that was visible from my backyard is Capella magnitude 0. Again, I'm not seeing any issues with halos here, so excellent. And then at the top right, Mankalanan, no issues with halos. Now let's look at an actual target that we would image instead of just single stars. This is the Horsehead Nebula, which I imaged with the 85 millimeter quintuplet refractor from my backyard. And this is two and a half hours of exposures. And the bright star over here, Alnitak, has been the bane of everyone's existence because this always shows very bright halos on almost any filter. 
and it's right next to the Horsehead Nebula, which of course is a beautiful target we all want to image. And if you want to know what halos look like on Alden Attack, I pulled up this image uh, on Astrobin. It's not mine, but you can see Alden Attack over here, and it's generating this really bright halo. And uh, this is actually not the worst example I've seen of halos on Alden Attack from filters. But as we can see in this image, absolutely no issue here with halos, nothing objectionable at all. So I'm uh, very, very happy to see that. And of course, the performance itself is, uh, is phenomenal, uh, not noticing any issues. And this image was actually taken when the moon uh, was about, about half full and maybe about 30 degrees away from the target for about half of the time I was imaging this target. So considering that especially, you can see that I was still able to get some excellent data. So overall, I have to say the filter performed very, very well. No issues with the halos at all. It performed very well on fast optics at f2, and it performed very well um, on slower optics at f5 with my refractor. So I have absolutely no complaints at all with this filter, and I would highly recommend it uh, for anybody looking for a nebula filter to image from the city. And if you have any questions at all about this filter or about anything else astro related, post them in the comments section below and I'll be sure to answer. So if you like this video and think that this might be the filter for you, consider using one of the links in the description of this video to make any of your astro purchases at, as that supports this channel at absolutely no cost to you. Thanks again for watching and clear skies. Thank you.